Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tonal Talk. My name is Kate. I am your community manager. Tonight, we're going to be talking about something that comes up in the community almost weekly, I would say, and that is the conversation around how to balance strength and cardio. What do we do? Which one should we prioritize? How should we fuse them together? So Coach Nicolette, our program design specialist, is going to be on tonight to give us the ins and outs and try to ease our minds about how we balance our strength and our cardio to reach our goals. So before we have her come on, I'm going to give everyone a moment to join. I'm going to pin this to the top of the group so you can find it and tell you about a few exciting announcements. Um, so the big one, which a lot of you saw yesterday and experienced today, is that we now have arm position indicators on your trainer during your workouts. You never again have to wonder, are those even? Is this right? Am I setting this up right? You now can, while you're moving your arms, you'll have these little blinking lights come up on the sides. It's very well designed, um, and it'll tell you if you're in the right spot or not. So. That is a game changer for a lot of new people coming on to Tonal who are still trying to figure out how to work the arms. Um, and it's just convenient for all of us just to make sure that those arms are in the right place. So enjoy that. Let us know how you like that feature. And we've got more coming. I don't even know if you guys are going to be able to handle all the releases that are coming up. I just can't wait. Um, we also have some new content types. We've got meditation with Coach Allison and Jared. So good. I've been trying to add this in and it has been amazing. I could listen, listen to Coach Allison all day long and Coach Jared's breathing techniques just make me feel like I'm floating by the end. So check those out. We also have family fitness for those of our super parents who are homeschooling now. <laughs> bless you. Um, so now you can spend a little bit of time with your kids on tonal, get that energy out, get the blood flowing, give them a little break from their schoolwork. Um, so I think that's Coach Paul, Coach Gabby, maybe a few others, but there's some fun ones. There's Animal Kingdom, Football Camp, check those out. And um, we also have a new program, Radical Muscle Rock with Coach Pablo. If you did Radical Body Rock, then you know you've got to check this one out. Um, it's an advanced program. It looks killer. Uh, so I can't wait to hear how y'all like that. And yeah, that's that's what we got for you this week. So without further ado, I want to introduce tonight's guest. She is a postural specialist and program design specialist and a strength coach. Um, you'll know her for her love of Bulgarian split squats, um, but you'll also know her from her Better Bike and Tread program, a very popular program on Tonal that fuses together strength and cardio. And so tonight we're going to be talking all about that and answering questions at the end. So without further Further ado, please welcome Coach Nicolette. Hello. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm really You're in a new place. place. I know we just had a couple uh, technical difficulties, but I can hear you. I can see you. We're all good. Always. You guys, my <laughs> internet went out five minutes before we were going to go live. Just, you know, 2020 in a nutshell. Um, <laughs> before we get started, Nicolette, I was hoping you could tell um, our community a little bit about your background and some of the greats that you've trained with and that you've um, you've learned, gone through your education with. Yeah. So as Kate introduced, I'm a postural specialist, which is kind of where I started my specialties. Um, what that basically means is I help people get into their most optimal position for movement because posture is how we begin and end movement. And I started a lot of my career going in that direction. And I found that I was attracting clients that had a lot of injuries and back pain, and I loved helping those people. And I started to get really curious more about program design and actually learning more in-depth ways to create programming for whatever response someone's body is wanting to get, whether that be fat loss, um, increasing muscle mass, strength, power. And so I started to dive a little bit deeper into that. And I still use my postural background by I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one assessments, a lot of virtual ones right now um, for people that have back pain and any postural imbalances that they see and feel in their movement. Um, but I also do a lot of program design and my programming knowledge comes from the Poliquin group and Kilo Strength Society. Um, and then my postural background and some of my programming comes from the Czech Institute. So Paul Czech and uh, Steph, he runs uh, Kilo Strength Society, have been two of my biggest mentors in, um, in, in my, you know, in my business now. 
Yes, huge. Um, I love Steph. I've trained with him. I've learned with him myself. And I mean, his knowledge is just incredible. But anyways, um, so you yourself, you are very into strength training and lifting, of course, but you also ride your Peloton. You're also into cardio. And so you're a perfect person for us to talk about how do we balance these two types of training? Um, and so I just want to settle the debate once and for all. Uh, what do you recommend or what, what would you prioritize, strength or cardio and why? Yeah, so it's definitely a loaded question, but the first answer and the most important answer is going to 100% be strength training. Um, that's not because I'm by bias towards strength training, but that's because in order to get stronger in whatever sport you're doing, whether it's endurance or not, strength training is going to help get you there. I think that if you prioritize cardio, you're reaching a different type of goal, maybe maintaining endurance if you prioritize cardio. But if you're trying to improve performance whatsoever, strength training is how you're going to get there. And I think a lot of people get confused because they're like, well, cardio means cardiovascular fitness. And yes, that's what it means. But a lot of the time when I'm on my Peloton bike, it's not my heart rate that's keeping me from going faster or going longer. It's my muscular fatigue. It's my strength in my muscles and my muscle fibers. So the the idea that cardio is only about cardiovascular fitness and that's how you improve it is definitely not the case. It's actually a ton to do with strength training. And that has to do with our different muscle fibers and how each muscle fiber can influence and help us develop so that we're training specifically for the type of endurance that we're doing. Um, because each muscle fiber works under different times of tension and they're important for different um, muscle for, you know, for different uh, events. And I say, when I say event, it means like an event could be a 10 K an event could be a marathon or an event could be like a 45 minute power zone ride on Peloton that you're working toward. Right. So whatever that event may be. So before we get into the muscle fiber specifically, and this community loves to geek out, so let's let's dive deep there. Um, but would you say, I mean, you said prioritize strength, but are there caveats to that? Like if I'm training for a marathon, would I then would then I I prioritize my cardio, or if I am a triathlete or mm -hmm. something like that? Are, are there yeah. ca caveats where you would prioritize cardio and supplement with strength? Now it depends on where in your periodization you are for that event. So sure. whatever your event is, whether it's what I said before, some big time thing, or it's just a Peloton ride that you're trying to work toward, it depends on how close you get to that event. Now for my clients and what I recommend is that leading up to it, your strength training is still definitely a priority. The closer you get to your event, you will start to pull back a little bit on the strength training because what you're trying to do is create peak performance. And to get to your peak performance, it's basically your body being at its absolute best. It's not tired from your strength training or sore, but it's also preconditioned and ready to go. It's like ready. And that's peak performance. So when you're training for an event, you're trying to get to a point where you're at peak performance right at your event. And that usually means strength training. And we won't get into this a ton today as a whole other topic of like, what the volume and the intensity and the reps and the rest, what that looks like leading up to an event one month, three months, six months prior to an event. But we'll say in general, we strength train and then seven to 10 days to a point before that, if we're training for like a marathon, we would then pull back a little bit and train and change the strength training up to prepare for that cardio. Now, mm -hmm. most of us in here aren't preparing for marathons left and right. You know, mm -hmm. maybe we are once or twice a year. Um, some of some people in the community are athletes and they are doing that. Um, but if it's cardio that you're just trying to do on a weekly basis, you don't miss, you don't have to pull away from your strength um, like okay. you would if you were preparing for a big event. Gotcha. And if people wanted to learn more about periodization for triathlon training, we do have programs for that uh, with Coach Mark Allen. We have two, and it makes sense what you're saying. One is for while you're in your season, and one is for before your season. So exactly. the volumes are different, but yep. like you said, we won't get 
too deep in the weeds. I can go on forever. <laughs> let's get in the weeds on muscle fibers. Let's talk about yeah. that. And we actually have a slide to, to pull up here. Yeah. Oh, We're that's right. Cool. On Tonal Talk. Um, so here we go. So you can see the yeah. muscle fibers there. Nicolette, walk us through this. Yeah. So these are some notes, guys. We won't go super heavy into it, but it's good information to know. I didn't want to throw out one, two, three, four, two B, two A, and not have you something to look at because it can get a little complicated. But in general, type one muscle fibers, they are slow and oxidative. So they're more endurance based. So this is like your marathon. Uh, these are the muscles that you want to train for your marathon. If you're trying to go a long distance, you're not going to train your type 2B muscle fibers because those muscle fibers are meant for power. Um, for type 1, to train that aerobic power, as you can see, you're working in the 30-second to 2-minute time under tension range. Mm -hmm. um, and your work-rest ratio is equal. So a lot of, as, as you get more powerful and as your time under tension actually starts to get smaller, you actually need more rest because you're putting in a lot more effort. So if you look over at type 2B, the work rest ratio is one to six and mm -hmm. one to five. That's because you have to rest so much longer to be able to recover. So this kind of shows you how whatever type of endurance you're doing, you want to make sure to train the muscles to help you with that type of event or that type of cardio. You don't want to be doing, you know, only really long 15 reps, 20 reps of an exercise if you're trying to train power. Mm -hmm. You're trying to train power and you want to work on your starting strength, let's say on your bike or you want to work on um, in, like having a more a, a better um, power zone ride, you would want to work more on the type 2A and the type 2B because those are going to be muscles that help fuel that type of cardio. Um, so it's really important to see how muscles have so much of an influence on our cardio. We have to train the right muscle fibers. Um, so if we move into 2A and you guys can see it, it says – that this is more, um, this is more like a combo of power and endurance. And type two A is actually really good for body composition. Mm. So this is the kind of cardio you're going to want to do if you're trying to increase muscle mass or lose fat, mm -hmm. um, because you're able to build muscle within this. And we'll talk a little bit later on what that kind of cardio looks like, um, because it might not be the classic cardio that you're thinking. It's actually going to be a lot more like tonals high intensity. Um, mm because we're loading the body under tension. Um, so, and then we move into type 2B and that's even more powerful. And the time under tension is even shorter. So it's important to see how much your muscles influence the performance of your cardio. If you're not training the right muscle fibers, it doesn't matter how good your heart is, your muscles aren't gonna last. So it's really important. Okay, you said something about, you know, the, the type of cardio you're doing might not be what you think it is or, or might not be training the muscle fibers in the way that you should be to reach your goals. Um, can you break down the different types of cardio for us and what muscles there, what type, what muscle fiber types they're working? Yeah, so uh, a long distance run. So anything that's over, I would say, even like, um, you know, for some people, maybe a 5K can be more powerful because it might not be that long for them. Mm -hmm. um, but for some people, that might be a really long distance. So you would want to train type 1 fibers because you want to be able to last maybe a 10K or a, a half marathon or a marathon. Um, type 2B, again, I think of this more as like the body composition range. You're not necessarily training for super powerful or for long hauls. This is more like your hit training and is a little bit more intentional for body composition. Um, and then, so as far as sport goes, I would say it's like your middle range. It's maybe um, the muscles that you would work in a hit class that's like a 15 minute Tabata or um, a, you know, 30 minute hit ride, something like that, where it is constant, where you are pushing your limits 
and it's not just like a long steady ride but you're pushing your limits every so often but they're maybe not like 10 second spurts they're 20 or 30 second spurts okay. um, you're basically kind of reaching into the aerobic but you're still in this anaerobic and aerobic mm -hmm. means longer spurts of cardio and energy anaerobic is less basically okay. yeah. um so the type 2b would be like for my for athletes that i have that are wanting to work on their starting strength in um whether it be sprinting or even in long distance runs but they want their starting strength to be stronger and more powerful um type 2b sprinters soccer players so it would be um like uh middle you know in, in a in a soccer game it would be like the mids they are the ones that are running back and forth um they need to be sprinting a lot so they need to sprint to the ball and then back to the you know the other end and then the other way back and forth back and forth so they'll need more power in their run so that's things but for things that we do day to day i would say the power one you're not going to use as much i don't think i've ever done a ride on peloton where i'm only sprinting for five or six seconds the minimum is usually 10. so although it would still be really helpful you're probably working between the ranges of like the 20 second range and the 10 second range as far as like the intensity that you're doing in your cardio so if power zone rides are your jam definitely want to start working on the type 2a and the type 2b types of muscle fibers and that means that even your time under tension when you're doing your your strength workouts you want to stick in those time under tension ranges for every set smart okay i wanted to let katie and matt and tara know that we will save plenty of time at the end for questions and answers so we will get to you um in the meantime i wanted to ask you if you had some general guidelines for us around balancing strength and cardio like our golden rules yeah and that can be on that's on the next slide mm -hmm. so the next slide pretty easy here um nope nope <laughs> that's okay maybe the next one <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so um, for the general guidelines, first of all, first and foremost, strength first, cardio second, people. One more um, point to the people in the back. Yeah. And I say that because it's just a very common question. Mm -hmm. um, and understandably, a lot of people don't know the answer to this question. They want to improve their cardio, so they don't want to be tired for their cardio, and they do their cardio first. But... You have to remember that your strength training fuels your life and it fuels your events and your sports and your extra, extra, extracurricular activity, extracurricular <laughs> activities. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, so it should be done first. Not just because it's more important, because it's safer, though. If you do your strength training second, you're putting your body at risk. Strength training is much more demanding on the nervous system. So if you tire out your system first with cardio and then you try and do strength training, you're not going to be able to, A, perform nearly as well, and B, you could be putting yourself at risk because you are not going to be able to perform optimally. And so if your weight on tonal is being set and it thinks that you haven't done 45 minutes of a power zone ride, then it's probably going to be too heavy for you. Um, and also, your strength training will get you stronger for the ride. Now, we will talk about when to do cardio and strength training a little bit later. Um, and how to not be tired for your cardio because you do want to improve your performance. But if you're going to do strength training and cardio on the same day, strength always first, no matter what. Strength All right, number first. Two. Got it. <laughs> Workouts should not last longer than an hour. And that's cardio and strength. Combined. Um, my, yeah. Even in okay. my better bike and tread, the workouts combined are really around an hour. They're not much more, maybe a little bit less. That's just because after an hour, your body is like, I'm good. I'm taxed. Your nervous system is taxed. It's ready to move on. My general rule is like, if you can work out for an hour and a half, you better check your intensity because that <laughs> is way too low. Like, <laughs> should not 
be able, <laughs> you should not be able to work for that long. So if you are, again, doing cardio and strength on the same day, it shouldn't be more than an hour. If your strength training lasts 40 minutes, 20 minute ride. If it's 30 minutes, 30 minute ride. If it's 45 minutes, shoot, I wouldn't do a ride. But if you're crazy and you do, 15 minutes to bought a ride. That's what they have on Peloton, you know, so. And that, is that even like morning and evening? You, you, would, you wouldn't do 45 in the morning, 45 at night? Because I know some people in here are going to want to do that. You could for sure if you separate it. But again, I want your strength training to be very demanding. That's how you create change. That's how you create muscular damage and fatigue. And that's how your muscles grow. And if you're working at a general intensity, you're not going to really improve your performance on either. So just maybe take notice and try and see, maybe I should up my intensity on tonal. Should I really, and that doesn't mean like take your weight up. That means slowing down your eccentric, being more intentional about your movement, really squeezing the muscles, being very present and making those exercises more difficult. Um, it doesn't just mean add weight. Yes, 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 yes. So much yes. If everyone on their next workout just really tried to focus on that mind muscle connection and slow down, I want everyone who's watching to do that and report back on how it feels, how much different it feels when you are really plugged in than when you're just going through the motions and just kind of sloppy and just getting it done. Feel yeah. it. And I and say that a lot with my cool. clients. Yeah. I say that a lot with my clients. It's like, you could easily do this exercise and feel nothing. Yes. A great example yes. is like the, the farmer marches on tonal. Yeah. You can just pick up your legs and it would be nothing. Put some intention to it. Engage yeah. the lats in the back and squeeze the core and use the hip flexors and the quads. You'll feel a big difference. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you're watching and yeah. you're working out and you're like, ah, it's been 45 minutes, but I'm really like, whatever, I could do more. You're not working out hard enough. Get that intensity up. Get that mind-muscle connection going. And then see if you could then go and do another hour on cardio. Probably not. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. Let's take some time and be more efficient with our workouts so we can go exactly. do other things and use that strength in other areas of our lives. Exactly. And like, there's so many good things in the world to do. Like, yeah. I so, love working out. I love all of that. Like, <laughs> do some other stuff. <laughs> Very true. Okay. The last thing is yeah. okay. So, on your training, on your on the days that you're training your cardio event. So let's just to make it easy because a lot of the people here are doing some form of indoor cardio. So maybe your event is like a, a really difficult power zone ride or something on any device that you have that's like super challenging and you're going hard and you want to really perform better. Do that on its own. Don't do strength training on the same day. So you're really important rides, those are days that you don't strength train with it. Let's say you're training for a marathon. And with a marathon training, you increase your mileage, usually like a half a mile every week or a mile every two weeks or so, depending on your, your training cadence. Um, your long run day, you wouldn't do strength training on that day. So that's the example. So just make sure that on the days that you have like your event, you're not strength training, even if it's like your big event leading up to your big, big event, like whatever day of the week is on hold for like your most difficult bit of cardio. Don't do strength training that day. Do it the day before or two days before so that you're at that peak performance that we talked about for the cardio. And on one of those days where it is your main event that's not strength training, maybe supplement with um, one of the recovery sessions yeah. or a meditation or a yes. yoga, maybe like a lower body yoga, just to exactly. like unwind. I would do something if you, because it's so beneficial to constantly not just do strength training, but be aware of your movement in general. I would highly recommend pre um, a pre-workout on tonal. So any of our like some of the recovery workouts, any of um, the flows and like the, a couple of Coach Jared's like mobility. mobility. Yes. Perfect. So good. Post -run, mm -hmm, post run yoga with Francis, mm -hmm. something that's going to be more stretch heavy. So just make sure that pre-run, pre-cardio, it's not so much stretching, but more mobility and movement and activation. And then after stretching. So there's, you can get on tonal and you can keep your, 
you know, your, Lord. what is it? The leaderboard, you know, <laughs> up there. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not a numbers gal. So I have, I don't like check the leaderboard, but I know plenty of you guys are on this. In this I just community. cracked into the top 100 and I don't want to lose it. So what? that's <laughs> insane. Holy moly. Well, before we invited the community and I was like top five and I kind of missed those days. So I got to work really hard now. I got to catch Michelle. Oh, I think I'm at like 3,000. <laughs> Um, okay. So that's super helpful. Yes. Um, where does foam rolling fit in? Is that a before cardio or after cardio thing? Mm, that can be both. Okay. Um, I have clients, if there's something like corrective that you're trying to work on, um, whether it be, you know, an issue with your knee or your calves get tight, releasing before would be great. Um, okay. and also releasing after. So foam rolling is good to do before and after. And Paragon too. You can do that before mm -hmm. and after. Right. Okay, cool. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's settle this debate, another debate, once and for all. We've got lots of controversial opinions in here. Um, what is better for fat loss, for, for um, body composition changes, strength or cardio? Give it okay. to me. So, everybody, listen up. <laughs> body composition, which is building muscle, so build muscle and also incorporates losing fat, that is body composition. In order to achieve that, you must have muscular tension. Without muscular tension, it cannot happen, which is why your body composition programs on tonal, your, your get lean programs are going to be higher in volume and create more muscular tension that burn and fatigue. That is why strength training is so much more beneficial for fat loss because you are putting it under muscular tension. And this is where tonal high intensity comes in. So we've talked a lot today already about Peloton and, you know, outdoor running and even rowing and, and cycling and things like that. But if you are wanting to improve your body composition, conditioning or high intensity under load on tonal is going to be your best bet because you are working under fatigue. So when you are an athlete or you are trying to train for a sport, the reason conditioning and or I call it conditioning because it's how I've conditioned myself to say it, but it's similar to tonal high intensity, which just means your cardio is weighted, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reason that is so beneficial is because you're under fatigue and you're training yourself while under fatigue. When you're out there doing your runs and your rides, you're under fatigue. So to train the body while being under fatigue is so, so important. And it helps train the body to be prepared for those events. Not only that, it's great for body composition because you're under muscular tension the entire time, just like you are when you're doing a regular tonal workout or a tonal program. Okay. And I want to be really clear on something. Um, when we say body composition, we mean what we hear toning. I want to tone up. I want to see tone. It doesn't mean bulking. It mm -hmm. just means um, seeing some muscular definition, um, fat loss, a little bit of muscle showing, right? It's changing, it's changing your body composition. So right. by building muscle and losing fat, your body composition changes. So if you've ever, you guys have all gotten, a lot of people have gotten like the DEXA scan or whatever it's called, mm -hmm where you've had a trainer measure your body fat, they're measuring your body composition. So when I say body composition training, that just means in any way that you're trying to change your body composition. And mm -hmm. that means usually building muscle, which then helps you lose fat. And that is either toning, the word toning, which you won't hear me say that, but that's a familiar word. So right. we want to, we want people to understand, you know, language, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, that would fall under the category of toning. And I see all the time people will come into the community and be like, you know, I've been doing cardio, cardio, cardio. I've been a cardio junkie, cardio bunny my whole life. And I start strength training and, you know, I weigh the same. Maybe I weigh more, but things are fitting better. Things are looking better. Things are feeling better. And yeah. that's what we're talking about. Yep. Because you're so. putting the body under muscular tension. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wanted to um, say something to Rebecca Sheldon Brogan. Um, she said she we were saying some terms and she didn't know what they meant. Rebecca, yeah. just let us know what you want to know. Um, we can go over anything. We can slow it down. We can whatever you need. Let us know um, what you have questions about and we'll do 
all questions and answers at the end too. So it's more coming. Um, okay. With that being said, let's talk about sample schedules of how people yeah. should be planning out their weeks. Um, what? And I think we had another, I think I have a thing. I'm looking, I just want to make sure I look at it right. But I think we have a actual slide, right? For train weekly training schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, girl. Uh, let me pull that up. I need a producer on here. <laughs> anyway, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about how to plan out our weeks here. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to write this out because, again, is a lot of information like the the muscle fibers. We won't like dive deep in every single one, but just so that's out there. So I separate into three different things. And the first one, body composition again. Now, this is how I envision um, body composition. Body composition training is hard. It is difficult. It is raising the barbell, go big, go home, four weeks of fat loss. It is so intense every time you work out. It should be so hard that you could not possibly do anything after. There, there is no excuse. If you can do something after, you didn't work hard enough. <laughs> um, body composition training, down. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes <laughs> it might make you want to barf. That's body composition training. Like that, I don't try and make my clients barf ever, but if they do feel that way, it's when we're doing a body composition program um, So or a phase. So... Keep that in mind, which is why during body composition, you won't do cardio on the same day. So you'll notice that your strength training is usually a little bit more blocked off, like lower, like pu pulling and then pushing and then arms and then shoulders. It's a lot more segmented than like, you know, just a, a general strength day of upper and lower. Um, but whatever your focus is, it's usually going to be not just one concentrate on maybe two muscle groups and you'll notice that with raising the barbell or go big go home that they're full body in the sense that it's like a lower you know pushing mm -hmm. and then back it's specific um that's what i mean by full body it's not like every muscle is working anyway yeah yeah so um and then your next day would be dedicated to cardio and it's going to be hit and it's going to be tonal high intensity and the reason, again, tonal high intensity is going to be so important is because you're under um, tension. You're under muscular tension. You're creating muscular tension by being under weight. And that's really, really important for body composition so that you can continue to build muscle while getting your heart rate up. So it's like your heart rate is up. You're working your cardiovascular fitness because in tonal high intensity, there's not a lot of resting. It's go, go, go. It's time based. You move quick. You're getting your cardio in, but you're also getting the muscles to fatigue and create uh, damage so that they grow. Um, um, real quick, would tonal boot yeah. camp fit into this? Those are off tonal, but they're still um, high intensity. Would those also? Yeah, and they, okay. I would. I would definitely put those under that category because you are working on cardio and there's that muscular tension. And also, if you're finding that like. I'm really sore after my workouts, like tonal high intensity is too intense for me. Okay. Then yeah, I would try like a body weight, but also if you're really sore and you feel like you can't um, do even a tonal high intensity, do a tonal yoga or a tonal mobility with a hit cardio instead. So just kind of, if you can't do a tonal high intensity because it's too much for you based on soreness, that's okay, but make sure to still mobilize and stretch on tonal, and then you can possibly do some cardio on Peloton or whatever device you have. Okay, um, got it. So that's basically the split. And then the Wednesday strength training again, Thursday rest day, Friday strength training, and then you have your hit, and then you rest. So you're only doing maybe one to two days of cardio. Um, and if it is trying to make it short, quick, powerful, boom, 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 under tension, really hard, really difficult, and move on. I think that's really contrary to what a lot of people think. I think a lot of people think, oh, I want to lose weight. I'm going to do tonal every day and cardio every day, yeah. and I'm going to work out at least an hour every day, yeah. and you know, I can't let go of my cardio if I'm trying to lose yeah. weight. It's all what you're saying here is what? Sorry, go on. Sorry. What I'm saying, what you're saying here is do 
let do more in less time, yes. pack it in, yes. make it more intense. Yes. If you're, if you're up for that challenge, if you have that base level foundation where you can push yourself to that level, if you are a total beginner, start slow. Yeah. Well, and I was going to say, if you're a total beginner, steady state cardio is great. So if you're a beginner and you still want to do body composition, fantastic. Do steady state cardio instead. Do that for one to two months and see how you mm -hmm. feel. Maybe then progress to like 10 minutes of hit, 10 minute boot camp, you know, 15 minute hit, 15 minutes of bada. Like move up there. But steady state is wonderful for beginners. But once you're past the beginner range, I would start to introduce high intense intervals to that. Okay. Got it. Um, okay. So then, Go to yeah, peak performance. Mm -hmm. So peak performance is if you're training for an event and you're trying to get your performance to its peak for an event. And like we've kind of been doing, let's say that that is a, a power ride or you're trying to like increase your time on a run outside. Like you're trying to improve your run time, like for your, you know, a, a sprint or even a mile. And you're trying to really get your power and your starting strength. So for the, the difference between peak performance and body composition is that your strength training is going to look a lot different than body composition training. Um, it's a lot more demanding on the nervous system, less on the muscular system. So mm -hmm. you won't be as fatigued muscularly. And so you can get on the bike. You know, like okay. you fatigued your nervous system, but you don't need much of your nervous system to sit on a stationary bike. Um, mm -hmm. So you could do some cardio after. Um, I would still keep it low and intense. I don't think there's necessarily a reason to keep it really long, especially if you're working on performance. But again, going back to what we talked about before, it also depends on what your event is. If it's a really long distance run, or long distance ride, then your training should match that. So if you do need to do a long ride or a long run, then you might do that on a separate day um, yeah. than that. So what I'm saying is, is like, if you're strength training and then you're doing cardio, you're not training for your event that day. You're doing a supporting event, like a supporting cardio, but it's not like your big thing. Um, yeah. You wouldn't do that on a strength day. Um, and then you know, the next day I have doing lower body and then, but no cardio, um, mm -hmm. because you're concentrating on lower body. You're going to be a little bit more sore. You probably won't have the best performance full rest day the next day. And then it kind of repeats itself. And you'll notice that on Sunday, they've had a rest day on Saturday. On Sunday, we hope that they've had enough rest that they can be at their peak performance that day to do whatever the event is, whether right. that's their power zone ride or a long run um or whatnot and so if your event is a different day of the week just shift this whole training schedule exactly yeah exactly okay. and um, a lot of people are asking yes we can provide these slides later what's the problem you can't you can't see that that size seven font <laughs> i knew that was gonna happen i was like this is gonna be so small but we'll share it <laughs> we'll share it for sure <laughs> Um, and then cardio maintenance, you know, I didn't know what to call this because honestly, this is like the like program where I'm like, I guess you could do that. But like, <laughs> this is the Nicolette rolls her eye program. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is like, if you really want to do cardio more than strength. If you, love it. if you love it, you love your community, wherever yeah. you're doing your cardio and you, just, you can't let it go. Great. I'm the opposite. Don't make me do cardio more than twice a week. <laughs> but... <laughs> But if, if cardio is just something you really, really enjoy, this is kind of how you can train around it. So a three-day split of strength training. Um, I would say um, any body focus. It can be lower, upper. It can be full body, whatever that is. And basically, you're putting a priority on your cardio. Um, there are some days where you're going to have cardio after your strength. Your longer cardio days are on their own, no strength involved. Um, and then you have two rest days. So you have two long cardio days three strength days where you include shorter cardio at the end and then you have two rest days so that's a very general i think this is probably more like what people actually do um mm -hmm. if they like cardio they're putting in this much 
just know that you're probably not strength training hard enough or enough to really change your performance. So if maybe you've seen kind of a flat line in your performance, it probably means that you need to move to peak performance and doing more of a setup like that. And then maybe come back to cardio maintenance in a couple of months and see how much better you've gotten. I feel like we should call this track the like path to plateau track. (laughs) I wasn't going to say it. (laughs) <laughs> but maybe bounce between body composition and peak performance if you want to spice things up a little bit. But maybe, you know, fitness is, you know, you need to take a little break. Maybe stuff at work is your life is crazy and you just want to maintain for a minute cardio maintenance. Great. Great. And a good program for something like that would be like my tonal tune-up. Mm. Tonal tune-up is a program that's not taken nearly as much as my other ones, but it's actually one of my all-time favorites. And I designed it to be paired with people who have a lot of extracurricular activities that they don't want to be sore for. So let's Mm. say you have like two or three months of really intense, like peak performance and body composition, you're really training hard, then throw in tonal tune-up and cardio maintenance and that type of setup for a month and then get back into it. I love it. Okay. I did want to talk about your Better Bike and Tread program, but yeah, we have so many questions okay. that I'm going to make sure that we save time for that. I think we should do the questions. I can really quickly go over Better Bike and Tread. It won't take long. With yeah. Better Bike and Tread, one, it was all about just connecting to the, the brain, to the body, understanding movement mechanics, um, you know, getting, getting down like single leg movement and how the glute fires and doing exercises that will help you in your performance for your biking or your running. Phase two was all about power and meeting that peak performance. So like I had had mentioned before, you'll notice in peak performance, you do strength and then you do cardio right after. And basically in Better Bike and Tread 2, you're concentrating on one movement. We do a a uh, rep and set setup that is great for power and strength. Get your nervous system like ah, ready to go. And then you get on your cardio and you're a freaking beast. So that's basically the two. The first one is great to pair with cardio because it gets your body ready and it's really good for understanding what muscles need to be worked. Um, but the second one is more focused on power and really increasing that strength. Okay, cool. Amazing. I think we got to most things, but I think we did. I'm so looking much. at my we notes. And... Going. I mean, let's let's get to let's get to questions. We have so, so many. Okay. All right. Let me pull up my notes here. <laughs> well, someone asked me, do I have gin vodka or post workout in my <laughs> in my shaker? Matt, that is water for now. Oh. Um, okay. Well, Matt, it is only Wednesday. <laughs> now, tonal clocks were on Fridays at five. Yeah, tonal treats. <laughs> okay, Katie Curran asks, and I apologize if I'm saying your last name wrong. Is it Curran? Curran? Let me know. Um, Katie asks, is it bad to do an hour of biking riding just for fun? I do an hour of strength four to five days a week. An hour of biking for fun just like on any day? Yeah. Oh, I mean anything for fun. If you enjoy something, do the heck out of it. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Especially if it's not like, and that's, and that's a really good point to make too. If like, you're just hopping on the bike to like, just, you know, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe your hips are tight from sitting at your computer all day. Shoot. I'm never going to tell you no. I'm saying if you are training for a purpose, then be more purposeful with where you put it. But if it's just a move, shoot. And it brings you joy. I mean, do it. We're all about the joy here. Okay. Tara Hansen asks, if you need to lose 30 pounds of, uh, what if you need to lose 30 pounds of fat? Can I do a tonal strength program and cardio a few days a week or cardio every day and training for a few days a week? I think we covered this one, but um, yeah. do you want to just wrap that up in 20 With seconds? Little bow on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So if you're trying to lose fat, definitely prioritize your strength. And like we said before, in order to improve your body composition, your body needs to be under muscular tension. And you do that by strength training. So make sure that you prioritize your strength and you are working to an intensity that is so difficult that you really wouldn't be able to do much cardio after. But if you can, it should be Tabata or high intensity uh, or hit on your cardio for maybe 20 minutes. 
Any more than that, I would say you're probably not working hard enough in your strength training. Perfect. Uh, Latimer Lewis says, hate to be the person that arrives late and asks a question that has already been discussed, but in case it hasn't been asked, how should we fit cardio in with programs like the daily build where it's six days a week? That's a good question. So six days. A yeah. Week. And I think with that one, there's two stretching days. Mm -hmm. So for sure, do your cardio on those two days. Um, and I don't know if they're full body or if they're lower upper splits, but if it's six days a week, that means four workouts. She might have done lower upper splits with that. But um, and it also depends on how long the workouts are. So Vladimir, is that what you said? Vladimir. Yeah, Vladimir. If your workouts are more than 45 minutes, then I would just stick to doing cardio on off days. But I don't think all the workouts are that long. I think they're shorter. So since the workouts are shorter, you could definitely add cardio in. But like I said before, make sure that you're working hard enough in your workout that you really don't feel like you could do more than 20 minutes or so of cardio after and make sure the cardio is intense. Like really put in that effort and make sure that you're, you know, that biggest bang for your buck. Got it. Okay, awesome. And Kingman asks, so would you add separate strength programs or separate cardio for body composition in addition to high intensity? Uh, read that one more time. So would you add separate strength programs or separate cardio for body composition in addition to high intensity? Not oh, like do a program in addition to high intensity. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So would you yeah. slot high intensity into your program, your total yeah. program? Yes. So, and that's a fat loss he said was, or body composition was a goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it depends on what program you're doing. Um, if you're doing raising the barbell, go big, go home, four weeks of fat loss, I, that might be, you might be really sore and not be able to do tonal high intensity in addition to that. So what I would recommend is you follow the cadence of the program that the, the coach has told you within the program, make sure you follow that cadence. And in that circumstance, it's really important to also just listen to your body. If you're really sore, like the kind of sore where it's like, you get to sit on the toilet and you're like, oh my goodness, okay, I can barely sit down. Eh, probably wouldn't do a tonal high intensity with Coach Jared that does goblet squats. Um, but if you just are like, oh, I worked my booty yesterday, um, then yeah, I would venture into a tonal high intensity. The reps are going to be higher. Um, your weight will be now, then be a little bit lower. Um, so it's going to take you kind of understanding your body a little bit. Um, so listen for your cues as far as soreness goes and definitely do more intense cardio on any of your off days for sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mariana Flynn says, if you are not a runner and don't have Peloton, but do programs on tonal for lean and muscle builds, um, are boot camps going to be a good addition or is that overkill? Great addition. Yeah, great addition, which we had mentioned. Yeah, wonderful mm -hmm. addition, especially because if you are a little bit too sore for weighted exercises, it's a perfect way to still stay up on the leaderboard, also keep moving and see our cute sunshiny faces on Tonal. <laughs> um, Pixie asks, uh, how would climb rides on Peloton fit into body composition goals and how does it compare to HIIT training? Great question. I've yeah, never done I did a climb ride today. <laughs> Ooh, I've never done one. Um, okay. Climb ride. I would say to make sure that your climb ride is at least two to three days away from any lower body day that you've done. So in body composition, it's either going to be full body or it'll be separated by like certain muscle groups. So let's say you're doing, um, you know, a, a it was like a chest and back and then shoulders and, or, and then like lower body. And then you have a rest day. I would either, I would take another day and then do a climb ride. So make sure that if you're going to do lower body, like give yourself a day or two. Um, if you could do upper body though, the day before, cause that's not going to be an issue with a climb ride. Also, if you did your lower body workout and you don't have a whole lot of soreness, you can do it, but I guarantee you'll still see, like you could do it the next day, but I guarantee you'll still see a difference in your performance, even though you don't have muscular fatigue your body knows that you did lots of lower body the day before. So just make sure that there's enough gap between your lower body workouts and your climb ride so that you're recovered so that you can be more at your peak performance um, for that climb ride. And that, that goes into body composition as well, because if you're not at your peak performance, you can't 
can't get as much out of either workout. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it, regardless of like what you're training, I mean, climb rides are going to be great for body composition too, because again, muscular tension, there's a lot of resistance. Great. I do, I do a climb ride at least once a week. Um, and I love it because it's another really good way to work my legs. Um, but I, like I did, um, I'm doing Paul's, uh, program right now. And I did the day that has legs two days ago. And then I did a climb ride today. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. Matthew asked, Matthew Fromm asked, seems you understand the power zone training program on Peloton. During the PZ challenges, there are three plus significant cardio, cardio efforts for eight weeks. Can you be effective at more than cardio maintenance, like body composition, or do you essentially need to focus on body composition only in between power zone challenges? Yeah. I wouldn't work on a power zone and then work on body composition right. because like we said before, completely different muscle fiber types. You're yeah. working way different. So body composition is not going to be necessarily your same power zone type training. So if you, that would be a great undulation though. So let's say you work on um, power and your strength training is more like better bike and tread two for a phase and you do that for a month and you also do that with power zone rides great and then the next next phase you do is maybe raising the barbell and more longer still intense uh rides that are going to complement your uh body composition program on tonal or more tonal high intensity or boot camps on tonal Okay. And sorry if I missed it because I was trying to read, um, read questions. If you're in a power zone challenge, what programs on tonal would you recommend to do during that time? Uh, better bike and tread too, for sure. Um, any program that's not too long, something like short, quick, sweet. Minutes. Yeah, yeah. Any of our like I performance, know. performance programs. Um, we obviously talked about that earlier today, Kate, so we can maybe specify mm -hmm. that later, but, um, off the top of my head, I really only know my better bike and tread. Um, but I know there are some other ones that concentrate on like performance and, um, you know, are not too long. You can go into the app and filter by improved performance, I believe, yeah. and you know, those would come up. Yeah. Okay, cool. And Brent, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to throw shade on your training program. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, maybe? Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Sarah Freyer um, asked, what program do you recommend for body composition? Sorry if you covered this. I hopped on late. Um, we have a ton of pro uh, programs tagged Get Lean that you can filter in the app. So check those out. Um, Nicolette, do you want to rattle off your favorite couple right now? Yeah. So it would be Raising the Barbell, um, Go Big, Go Home, Four Weeks of Fat Loss, uh, Summer Shred, um, what like Body Blitz uh, or that one by – Paul, um, extreme strength challenge uses eccentric. So that's really good. Anything with eccentric is going to be really good for body composition. Liz's lean in is great. Um, what else? Oh, tonal fit challenge with Pablo is going to be really good. It's got the cardio blast at the end. Um, anything that has higher volume. So higher reps and, and, uh, not even more sets, but just more reps within each workout. Cool. And Kingman asked, how do these three buckets, body composition, peak performance, cardio maintenance, correspond to the program layout that we made um, and posted a few weeks ago for fat loss, building muscle gain strength? And I want you to let you know that Nicolette and I met today. We are revamping that and we are putting that out next week for you. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. We'll definitely try and correlate that as much as we can um, with like cardio being, you know, somewhat of an influence because as much as we're trying to help with the cardio, like our goal on tonal, isn't necessarily cardio. It's definitely, you know, body, get lean, build muscle, improve your performance and improve your fitness. And those are probably going to be, and we'll share with you, there's going to be an improved performance category and we'll share with you those the programs. Way. And those are probably going to be the ones you want to stick with. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Chase Garwood asks on supportive workout regular days, doing two sessions, a swim or bike or run hour session and a lift. If I separate the workouts in the morning and afternoon, at least three to six hours apart, am I in danger of overtraining or should I rest in between? Um, okay. Repeat the beginning for me just one more time. Yeah. On supportive workout regular days, doing two sessions, a swim or a bike 
or a run and a lift for an hour. So each one's an hour. Mm -hmm. We kind of talked about this. Um, Is it okay that he separates three to six hours in between or is he overtraining? Well, the first way you know if you're overtraining is to look at your performance. If your performance is dwindling, then you're overtraining. If you have severe fatigue, irritability, if you are having any digestional issues, um, if you're not sleeping well, if, you know, there are a lot of signs that you could be overtraining. So definitely pay attention to how your body feels. If you feel fantastic and you're just go, 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 then everybody is different. All of these parameters I'm setting are not for everybody. Not, not even other, other coaches might disagree. Like the, everyone is different, but a good rule of thumb is that if you are training with purpose and intention, it should be really hard to work out for two hours a day. Um, even if it's split up, but there are advantages to that. Not saying it's not good, not saying you can't do it. You definitely can, but just pay attention to the signs to make sure that you're not overtraining. Cool. Um, okay. Um, Nicole Michelle asked a great question. Are benefits of training reduced when doing partner mode as you have more rest time between sets? Yeah. So the biggest thing with partner mode is making sure that you, I like to pick workouts that don't have single sides. Um, you know, because it's even longer. Yeah. So if body composition is your goal, I would recommend maybe not doing partner um, because you do want to move quicker. Uh, But it doesn't mean you can't do that. Um, The only thing that rest does for you is it helps you perform better in your next set. So it's not that it's going to be bad and that you might not get to your goal. It's just going to be different. With more rest, you're probably going to increase your weight. You're probably going to perform a little bit better. But with body composition, it's, that's not necessarily the goal. With body composition, the goal is to fatigue the muscles so much that they want to die. So um, it gets harder when you're doing a partner workout because there is that gap in between. So, you know. Would you would you recommend the resting partner maybe do some, like, intense core work or, like, some definitely. bio um, stuff? Exactly. Like, what I would recommend if you're doing a body composition program or a get lean program on tonal, Whatever movement you just did, do a body weight version of that right after. So let's say you did a front squat or a goblet squat, do either squat hold or squat jumps or just regular body weight squats to continue to build up that lactic acid while you are resting. If there wasn't meant to be rest in between. If there's rest in between, make sure to rest. With okay. that in mind, though, that means your work is a lot longer. So maybe both of you guys rest at the same time after for a minute or 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, like, because you're doing extra work now. So just make sure yeah. that you're not overdoing it. But yeah, I would just duplicate similar movement patterns so that you're burning out those muscle fibers and you're creating that muscular damage so the muscle grows. Sounds fun. All right, Nicolette, we are out of time, but thank you so much for joining. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and your expertise with us, with our community. Thank you everyone for tuning in and watching and asking questions. Um, Tune in next week. I have Debbie Mestre on next week. She is so wonderful. And she's going to be talking to us about picking up strength training in your 60s. Let everyone can do it. It's never too late. So join us next week on Tunnel Talk, and I will see you all in the community. Have a great evening.